Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about the signal generator in WaveLab Pro 9.5. I'm not sure how much it changed since earlier versions. Um, I never really used it before. Um, and this is why <laughs> I'm doing this tutorial. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to give you the basic rundown on how it functions, and then maybe I'll do another video on practical applications uh, to use it. So it can be found from the file menu, that one or this one. You go to Tools and then Signal Generator. So it doesn't look too bad at first. You've got your basic waveforms. You know, there's a bunch to choose from here, which is kind of cool. Um, would I, well, actually, let's get on the same page. If you're following along, just reset this to the factory defaults. So if you click there, go to what factory presets, default, and we'll both be looking at the same thing. So anyway, we've got basically this link up here determines what kind of file I'm going to create. So mono or stereo, sample rate, and the bit depth. We'll leave that alone for now. Um, here is obviously the type of wave. And this, this is what confused me. This tab and this tab. And I was like, I just want to make a 1K test tone for five seconds. How do I do that? And I was screwing around with it. Fortunately, there are some factory presets that give you the basics. Um, so you can start with one of those and then modify it. Um, now, one thing, and the manual dedicates like three pages to this, and it could be 30 pages. It should be at least 10. <laughs> um, but anyway, l let me uh, let me point out uh, two discoveries I made that made a big difference. Most of the time, I'm using just a solid tone, one frequency, sine wave at a certain level. Uh, if that's all you want to do, then you notice how the median frequency two is bolder than all the others. That's your the target frequency. That's going to be the frequency. If you just can use one, you put it in there, but all these need to be down to zero. And I'll explain those later, but, um, there's a 220 test tone, and then how long do you want that test tone? Well, same thing. The sustain time is basically how long it's going to uh, produce a signal for, five seconds. As long as all these other uh, time values are set to zero. So if that's all you need to do, then you can... Uh, Put in your info to generate. Now we've got a, uh, what's it, 220? Uh, 220 test tone. So exciting. <laughs> but as you can see, it's peaking at zero dB. And that's a function of this overall gain, which sums all the layer. We're just doing one layer. You can layer like 64 different uh, uh, signals on top of each other. I don't know why you would go into that much depth with that, but it's there if you want to use it. Um, this global gain is going to take, obviously, if I've got six layers of different sine waves, wherever they're positive, they're, we're going to start clipping. So you can adjust the overall output of the signal generator with this global gain. And then to fine tune the mix of the different waveforms, each one will have their, their gain as well. So anyway, so back to frequency. So there we just did a simple 220, but let's say we want to test our frequency response on our speakers or something. You know, we're gonna 
start maybe 30 hertz or something. And we'll go 30 hertz for two and a half seconds. Uh, so you can't do 2.5. So half a second is 500 milliseconds. Check that faster. Uh, 500. Okay. So, oh, uh, here's where I'm from. Uh, do not like the way that this responds. But anyway, so basically we start at 30. We're going to go for two and a half seconds and ramp up to 220, where we'll stay. So let's just listen to that. Do generate. It's going to pop in another audio file. And here's the, here's the second one. So you can see it gets faster and faster. And we just sit at 220. So um, anyway, uh, then you could also, so we've got two and a half seconds. Now what you have to remember, this level, the sustain time, five seconds. You need to keep that in mind when you create your attacks. This is a slope from this frequency to this frequency. So if I slope, say, two seconds from 220 to 240, 440, whatever, and so now we've got two and a half, two and a half, or four and a half seconds of frequency response. So we're going to basically ramp up. Now it's got a half a second to kill, basically. So it's it's just going to drastically jump down to 220 for this last half a second because the frequency changes all need to fit within the sustain time so let's generate that listen to it so you heard that last half a second it just jumped down so if I wanted to go smoothly down from 400 to 220, I will just put in a half a second here. We'll generate that. Now it should go up to 400 in the last half a second. It'll duck back down to 220. So some of that. So anyway, this is one of those things that you really need to play with a bit and you'll, you'll get it, but it, uh, it takes some doing. I, I messed with this for quite a while. So besides frequency, you can change the level, the output, here, the output here. He's, so say I wanted to start this at negative 100. My start level, I would just, and you can drag with your mouse. You don't want to type it in as long as it's highlighted. So we're going to start at 100. If this is zero, this attack time is irrelevant because there's no time to start. So it's going to go straight to that, that frequency. So attack time, let's, let's just keep it simple. We'll slope the whole way, the whole five seconds to zero. So we're going from a hundred where we start. No, this is just attack on a little silence at the beginning. There's also so 
but we're going to start it at negative 100 dB and then we're at for the whole five seconds till we get to zero. So it's going to be. So let's look at that one. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Five seconds. But what's this business? Well, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is these are additive these values so now we have 10 seconds because we're going to sustain we're going to get to uh, zero db in five seconds but now i want to sustain zero db for five more seconds so if i wanted to chop that off and just have here i would need to move this back to zero that there we go so that sounds so um let me just show you how to do a smooth sweep where you don't have you see how in the middle it goes from the From the 220 to uh, two or to 400. So, if you wanted to get rid of that, for, so we would say from we're going to start at 30 hertz, and then basically you can take this one down to zero, and then this will be irrelevant. This one you will put to five seconds so we're bypassing this uh, because the attack time is set to zero but we're going to slope we're still going to slope from 30 to whatever frequency we put here let's put it 1k and then i don't want any release so i just want and you can just drag down get that to zero so this in frequency is irrelevant so we're basically going to sit at 1000 as soon as you start putting values in here now now it's going to actually end on this frequency so let's see what that looks like looks similar this should be a smooth sweep from 30 to uh, 1k let's see Looks good to me. Now, and you can look at your, um, I'll go more into this uh, if anyone's interested in like practical applications, but um, it's handy to look at your spectrometer and your scope, especially when you're getting into more complex. Um, algorithms that your customs up. So I would recommend once you get this dialed in, create your own presets. You can save your own. I've only got a few, um, but for sure you don't want to waste a lot of time. Usually once you get something that, that works for you, you don't want to spend the time adjusting it. So just save it as a preset. So anyway. So that's one layer, that's the uh, level and the frequency. Now frequency has vibrato. You could have a frequency modulation. This is how fast it will modulate, and this is how intense it will be. So let's, just so you can hear what it sounds like, we'll put four hertz and 7%. So now, Frequency is still going up, but it's modulated. You can do the same thing with tremolo, which is basically amplitude modulation. So if you turn this on, sine wave, we'll do the same thing. We'll just modulate the amplitude. So here's what it sounds like. Okay. 
So sometimes you will get this uh, flipping as a curve. Um, and that's a function of this modulation, probably here somewhere. Um, so you can take, I would just take down the, the global gain, maybe minus two, Let's see what that does. Okay, that gives us enough room. So looks different, that's amplitude. Can't hear that quite as well, so let's just pump that up. Now you could go crazy. You could put this at 100%. Now, <laughs> you, that's going to be quite a big range, so maybe I won't do that right now because I don't know exactly how much, how many decibels I need to com compensate there. But I want you to hear it, so let's put it at like. 27 and take our gain down. I don't need to take it down that much. Okay, just, just to hear it. So, so anyway, uh, I don't use those too much, but they're there if you want to. Now, um, sometimes you'll get, if you're, if you're looping it, especially if you're just going to create a constant loop, uh, which I do sometimes, I will, in this source, I'll adjust the signal length to end on a cycle boundary, just to make sure the, way, the waveforms match up. And you can do that in here as well, change frequency on cycle boundary and level change level on cycle cycle boundaries. Um, don't worry about DC offset uh, for now. I I haven't I don't have a good use case for using that. And so anyway, let that slide for now. And the other handy thing, so like I said, you can have 64 different levels, which is crazy. And um, I usually maybe use two or three. One of the things that is annoying is you can't solo a layer. So basically, say you have three or four different signals stacked on top of each other, making some complex sound. Okay, I want to isolate a certain, you know, uh, signal, you know, there should be like a solo button or mute, you know, something like that. Um, the only way I found to do it is to go into each individual layer and go to the level. I don't have the source, so if I had a way to go to level and then change the gain, I think you can go down to like 140. Yeah, so basically that will effectively mute this layer. So that's kind of a, a pain to do. I don't like to do it much, but if I have to, that's, that's where you would do it. Now this copy and paste, this is a nice feature. So say you totally, you want to start with your baseline. You know, you have, you have a good, a good uh, setup here, but you want to make a, a few minor tweaks. Well, you can do that on another layer and you can start with your, your baseline. So basically I will go to layer one, I'll copy it. We can see a change, I'll switch to layer two. Now, where's the, the overall gain? See how we, we dumped it there? I'm going to paste all the settings from layer one onto layer two. See how that changed to zero? And so now, now effectively, I have two of the same signals right on top of each other. And I do. And that's going to, 
negative nine because of this. If I wanted that to still peak at zero, I would just generate that. Oh, uh, since I have two layers, so it's gotta be a layer. So, uh, I'll say three. Still too much. Okay, so you can see your meter here. We should peak right at zero. Oh, oh no. So I'd have to fine tune that to get it to zero since I'm using layers. So there's a few different ways you can do that, but we don't need to get into the, all that right now. So the other thing I want to show you, let's get rid of this other layer, go back to zero. I don't know why it's this 0.01 in there a lot, but anyway, so say I want to generate a stereo signal. So now these channels have opened up. So let's first just generate your basic wave. So so you can do a lot of cool things with the stereo signal and so you can actually say i want to leave the left side as a sine wave but on the right side i want pink coins you know so i don't know why you would ever do that but just to show you you can do that we've got our random pink noise on one channel and on the left I got this time. So um, that can cut putting different putting them out of phase, you can mess with actually the phase relationship. So say I've got two sine waves. Um, and let's make them consistent, just sitting five seconds. Um, I oh, forgot to do all channels, okay, and just take this down to zero, it's the same time, oh, that's on the frequency tab, so. That's fine. Five seconds at zero dB, because these are zero. Frequency is what I want. So I don't want to modulate from 220 to 1K. I just want to go straight to 1K. So take the slope time, set that to zero. Bypass, bypass this, boom. We're hitting 1K. And we're staying there because this is zero. So anyway, let's see. That should just be a block. And it is. So you can mess with um, phase. So here's your angles. And you can put left and right. You can adjust them independently, which is kind of cool. So. You can either do it there when you generate the signal, or you can go in and take one side and nudge it. You know, if I select this and say I want to nudge it, there it is. Okay, I want to start nudging now. Look at the phase scope here. So right right now, if I were to play it, that's perfectly in phase. So let me take that down a little bit. 
just so it's not totally annoying. My monitors aren't going through that. Let me adjust my headphone level. Okay. <laughs> Better for me. I hope that's okay for you. Um, okay. So we saw that that was a perfectly vertical line. So if we were to actually move that 180 degrees out of phase, it would be a perfectly horizontal line. So just to show you, so right channel selected, I'm going to start nudging it. Keep an eye on this, see what happens to the face scope as I nudge it. So getting more and more out of phase information. Now, keep nudging, eventually we're going to get to a point, and you can hear that if you have headphones on, you can hear, hear the difference. That is a perfectly out of phase sine wave. So you can hear it's hard to localize um, your stereo image because one ear is doing this and that. So um, when things are in phase, they're basically moved back to 100% in phase. Now you can definitely picture and it's centered uh, the image because both of the speakers are pushing at the same time. So, and anyway, um, so that's the basics on the signal generator. Um, the only other thing I want to show, super up, make sure I covered everything in there. Signal generator. So we covered the global gain, individual gains, uh, DC off offset. I haven't messed with it too much, so I'm going to leave that. Um, yeah, so, and you can do linear frequency variations. It's what it says it is, so. Um, but hopefully that's enough to see uh, how useful this tool can be. I mean, the first time I looked at it, I was just like, please. <laughs> now it's like, oh, you know, and, and there's actually practical ways to use it, you know, and creative ways to use use it to use your tools better so maybe i'll do another video on that but anyway thanks for watching talk to you later Bye.